And I think we're on the air now. <laughs> it's not Logitech's fault we did not switch to new webcams. I actually can't remember the last time I bought a Logitech device. I'm pretty sure it was my very first webcam ever. It was one of those eyeball things, like completely junky. But every laptop I've had for, what, the last 10 years, probably more, all have cameras built in. I had a Logitech mouse once. It was amazing. It had like tactile feedback long before Apple's trackpads did. But again, I love the Apple trackpad. I'm not a gamer. I don't buy random peripherals. So how big could that market be? When one of our viewers suggested we look into Logitech, my first reaction was less than enthusiastic. They just make junky, obsolete webcams and stuff, right? But we looked into it anyway, and the more we looked into it, the more interesting the story became. Today on Dumb Money Live, we decide if we are going to invest in Logitech ahead of their earnings announcement tomorrow morning. This is Dumb Money Live with Chris Camillo, Dave Hansen, and Jordan McLean, streaming live on YouTube. We are Dumb Money. Hey there, Dave here, along with Chris and Jordan. Welcome to the show, our second attempt at making this show happen today. Sorry about that. We are testing out new software. Look how good we look, though. We are in, like, HD quality for the first time, and, and Chris's camera still looks a little red, but I'm going to work on that during the show. Um, but I know, Chris, you <laughs> attempted to read every single tweet with the word Logitech in it over the weekend. I was getting texts at 2 in the morning, like usual. Uh, we hung out, socially distanced, of course, in, in his front yard. Uh, had this amazing concert, front yard style. Uh, long after everyone left, we were still there debating Logitech. And I'm going to make this easy on everyone. I bought 100 call options expiring Friday this morning. I'll tell you why. But I'm curious, Jordan, Chris, have either of you made the investment yet? Uh, yeah, the, you remember this all started on Friday. I don't know when our last show was, but we had one of our sub subscribers was pinging us on Logitech, and I added it to the list of companies I, I, I was looking at. And I was maybe 20 minutes in on my Logitech research, and I saw things that were intriguing, and I kept going deeper and deeper. And there was like 10 minutes left in the trade on Friday, and I texted both of y'all, and I'm like, I got a lot of work to do on this one, but I. I'm already in. I, I went ahead and bought uh, basically 800 shares of Logitech on Friday. I picked up another couple hundred this morning and also, I don't know, 100, 150 contracts, uh, 45 strike price calls. To, to be clear, this is not, you know, this is not a trade. Uh, this is not a Peloton, right? This is, I don't have that conviction level. Peloton, I spent about 60 hours of uh, deep dive research. I put about 10 hours in. On Logitech this weekend, Dave. On on Saturday night, me and you probably spoke for an hour and a half about Logitech. At, at that least we had we had a country concert. <laughs> a guy came in on his pickup truck, and he had a fiddler with him, and he did a concert on our street in front of my house. And then he had a lady with him who was the most amazing singer, and they did a full concert to like sixty people on our street. And you know how neurotic I am. We had our yard roped off, basically, with signs. Saying, you had cones. We love you. you had cones and signs saying, you know, this is a high risk area. Do not enter our yard. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. We love our neighbors, but we're still social distancing. So stay the hell off our yard, please. <laughs> it was terrible. So funny. Um, so everyone was like hovered out in front of our house. Um, but I had the great Dave. That was the greatest time I've had in quarantine. Jordan, you would have loved it. It was they were doing '80s, '90s country. No, it was, yeah, it was such the, a good time. I saw some of the videos that uh, that Amy put up, and it looked like it was a great time. It was I'm, so I'm fun, looking man. to see if I have a picture. Yeah. I can't. I can't find one right now. But um, here's here's the thing, uh, Logitech. Uh, we're going to talk about Logitech. We're going to dive in pretty deep. Uh, into Logitech today. Uh, again, I want to repeat, this is not, you know, Peloton was what I consider a, a high conviction trade. Those things happen, you know, two, three, four, five times a year. Uh, we went in really levered, really big. It was the biggest trade I've made in many years. Uh, it was a seven figure win. It was amazing. This is not that. Uh, it's, a, it's a reasonably large size trade. But there's more risk. There's more risk factors here. I want to talk about. But let's talk about why we even like Logitech or like what's going on. Uh, everyone knows Logitech for their webcams, right? 
Is that and they're oh they're mice they're my they're mouse they're mouse frogs for yeah, gamers. Right? I I still I think I still have the old one. It must have been. I was working at Yahoo. It must have been like uh, in the late late nineties, early two thousand. So like it's a twenty year old product, but they had the coolest thing. But ever since then, every single time I think of Logitech, I think of like a twenty year old peripheral company making old <laughs> keyboards and right like, there's that and i haven't even thought about logitech in the past decade you know what i mean like i yeah. you have your laptop and you know i don't think about like little accessories i don't have keyboards or mice or anything i just have the laptop and that's it yeah and and that's um, it like, we're like, we, world right now. we are like apple enthusiasts we have yeah. every apple product and we have you know i've just i love their touchpad i love their external keyboards. I love the stuff that's built into their laptops. You know, it's it's what I use every day. So I haven't really gone shopping for like a gamer keyboard or a, you know, Dave, one of those weird... to get your magic keyboard oh, uh, this so week. I'm so excited about Mac. that. For the iPad Pro, it is ordered, amazing. But yeah, I'm super excited. So listen, it, it, oh, people are asking, did I get in? Uh, because everybody else is saying, yes, I did get in. Um, I, I just bought some call options. I've got a $50 strike on them. Um, yeah, I just picked them up this morning when the when the stock price came down a touch. Um, well, the fifty dollars ones were look like I don't know like I, I I feel pretty good about this Logitech trade, but like I got the forty fives because you know I don't know the the fifties you had to pay like three and a half points premium. Like I was able to get in with like a point of premium on the forty five. Yeah. I feel pretty good that Logitech's not going to have a significant drop today because the you listen they're selling everything they can make. Everyone knows that Logitech sold out of everything. Here's the trade. You know, we only trade when we think we have an informational edge. Yes. And I don't care if every Logitech product in the world is sold out. And most, not all, but most of them are sold out right now. Uh, that's not the trade. Uh, the trade on Peloton was not that it had an eight-week wait to get Peloton bikes, because everybody knew that. Our trade on Peloton was all about the fact that we had high conviction that Peloton dramatically reduced, if not eliminated, their marketing budget. And that was going to allow them to actually become semi-profitable and, and completely change the dynamic for how investors saw Peloton. And what was the one thing they talked about in that earnings call more than anything else? The lack of mark, the fact that they were able to turn off their marketing. No one was talking about that prior to that call. Nobody. We were the only ones focused on the uh, marketing uh, budget at Peloton being slashed. So. I think here, uh, the storyline is not the fact that their webcams are sold out everywhere and their their mice are sold out and the, even the keyboard, like they're selling out of everything. The storyline is their enterprise division, which is actually the largest, the fastest growing division at Logitech. Most people don't yeah, realize. I did not realize that. that. I, you know, I still yeah, thought I of them as that. a consumer brand that just seemed old school to me. Like even their logo was old school, but after their doing some research, looks, I figured out yeah. that they're actually um, they, they redesigned their logo. They have a whole gaming platform. The whole thing is a different company than what I was used to. Yeah, the it, logo that I remember is very like dot com days. Yeah, it, it, it had like that green thing with like an eyeball. It was, it, they're oh, yeah. they're known for being the eyeball, right? And and I <laughs> think they, I think they still make those. It, it's not <laughs> it's not a good look. I'm gonna go see if well, I can find mine. During today's show, <laughs> go 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 find it. But here, here's the thing: these guys, this is a big big deal. I'm about to say for Logitech because their number one fastest growing segment is enterprise hardware and enterprise software. Okay, so yeah. when you think about enterprise video conferencing, video conferencing at Mike, you know, Mike, we have Microsoft, Google, and Zoom. Uh, Microsoft Teams, Google Hangouts, and Zoom. Uh, all three of those providers control most. And there's also Cisco, right? So if you include Cisco in there, they, that's the entire enterprise market. And you need to actually have equipment. You need to have webcams at the enterprise level. And there's a few companies that make these, you know, multi hundred thousand dollar conference rooms for companies. But most companies are not about the boardroom. It's about the 800 mini breakout rooms that they want to have. Uh, set up for conference facilities as well. So what what uh, Logitech has been telling the investment community over the past few quarters is that this is a big, big, big part of the future of Logitech. And they right now at this moment, they have 65 uh, percent market share of the enterprise uh, webcam 
equipment market, right? So Cisco and uh, Polycom, they have the other 35%. What's fascinating here is that the market is only 2% penetrated. So they think that 98% of the small room conference market uh, for enterprise is still in front of them. And they were like planning on that to like roll out over the next decade, decade and a half. Yeah. So they structured partnerships with Zoom, Microsoft, and Google to where those three companies are now distributing and like they're the sales force for Logitech equipment for, for, for the enterprise, right? And so what's everybody been talking about this quarter that's the number one trend in the world? Enterprise video conferencing, exactly. right? <laughs> so, out of out of nowhere, everybody is taking their meetings at home now. And I still think that most of the home users are probably going to be doing this using their built-in webcam. But when people do go back to the office, or for the people, like if, if the workforce is going to be split and half of it's at home and half of it's going to the office, they need to wire up every single office space, every single desk. They The enterprise really does have a lot of work to do. And I, I just feel like out of nowhere, this company that I thought was outdated is going to be a major player the major, what, what did you say? 60% of the market share is Logitech They already cameras? own 65% of the market share for that. That's already theirs. They already have 60. They have yeah. 65% of the 2% of companies that have actually fully outfitted all their small conference rooms with video with video conferencing, right? With actual video yeah. conference. Because most yeah. conference rooms, as we know, they have an, a polycom or like some audio just a regular phone with like a conference call line on it, right? Yeah. They're not outfitted for, for video. 98% has not been outfitted for video yet. Yeah. And so I think the other thing is that it's not just that, but also think like any time you're doing international business, you're not going to be able to jump on a plane for, and we don't even know how long right now. You're not going to China. You're not going to Europe. Um, it's totally shut down right now. And so if you need to be able to communicate with somebody across, you know, you might as well have a nice, video conference and by the way so everyone understands what type of cameras we're talking about because it can get confusing uh the type of cameras that logitech sets up in these small conference rooms uh they are not just a single camera they actually track where you who's in the room so if more people walk in the room it will follow them it will go to the person that that is talking and they will actually you can put one in the center and you can see everybody in the conference room. So it's different from a webcam that you would just have on your laptop. They're designed for, to have multiple people in a room. And by the way, Polycom does the same thing. Cisco has a, those are the two competitors. Cisco has cameras. They do the same thing. But but Logitech kind of is the premier hardware provider in this space because they're so well known for their webcams. And that's why they were able to get these partnerships done with Google, Microsoft and Zoom. So we don't have to debate whether uh, video conferencing at the enterprise is going to be a big deal or accelerated. I think the world has pretty much realized that that's happening. Microsoft is already reporting earnings. Zoom has come out. Google's come out. They've all said that this stuff is going through the roof. Like that's not a big, you know, like thing to figure out. And I think I we think fast forwarded that, in time. We're, we're now maybe 10 years ahead of where we would have been. And it, it's, ju it's just moving faster. So their last earning call was, was what, in early March? Was that March? Or, or, I, yeah, no, was, I think it was in fe late. It was late February. They did have an investor day on March third. No, no, actually, and it was it was January twenty first that they reported their Q three twenty twenty earnings, and they were at that point talking about the big concerns being China tariffs, Brexit, and volatile currencies. Those were the only concerns. They hadn't yet talked about you know the world changing their way of doing business and, and video conferencing becoming a the big thing. But they did extensively talk about video collaboration being a key driver and a key focus for their next 10 years. We've just jumped forward in the demand for that. So at the time, they were saying that their sales in Q3 were up 25%. They expect their sales to continue going up for this, this video conferencing segment. So their company is basically three three divisions. It's video conferencing, uh, keyboards and mice. I think they call it the pointing point and click division or something. And then what was their other one? Oh, creativity and productivity. So they, they, they're focusing on the creator market, the office market, and then still making, um, 
Oh, gaming, like gaming keyboards and gaming mice. Now, Dave, I think you said something that's really important, which is the issue that Logitech has had this last year, and it's been a hurdle, but they've done really well with it, um, is one, currency headwinds, headwinds, but two, uh, tariffs. The tariffs have been terrible for Logitech. So basically, they had to increase their pricing for the first time in like over a decade or two decades yeah. um, in, in America just to try to make up for the tariffs, okay? So what's that was really, really rough uh, for Logitech. And even with those tariffs, they've done really well because they were able to increase their pricing and they didn't really see that much of a dent on demand. But that was a big negative for them. But what happened after that earnings call was something that was even worse. When they had their investor day on March 3rd, they that was right after kind of this whole thing blew up in china and they had to come out and say that they were reducing their guidance lowering their guidance because of supply chain issues i think they were lowering their guidance by 30 million dollars because they were having supply chain issues with a handful of factories in china and that was really really bad for them um and that quite honestly this quarter um, is going to cap the upside this quarter. But so what I was focused on in my research, that's well known. So analysts all understand that. Um, but did they work their way through that supply chain issue? Because they were hoping that by next quarter, the supply chain issues would be fixed. And I found something last night uh, that was so cool. Um, I actually found an article. This wasn't on Twitter. I, I, I had I had found the end of Twitter and Reddit and, and all that stuff. For, for, <laughs> you for, you for, always for, do. You, you somehow always deck, right? get to the end of the internet. But but I was I was not done. I was still hungry for information. I was like, I need more Logitech. Like, what am I missing here? And I started just Googling like just articles because sometimes you get like rogue articles and in industry trade press that comes out. And I found this uh, this interview that a tech uh, some tech media company did uh, with Logitech and it turns out that in the interview someone at Logitech uh, told them that they were gaining massive amounts of new supply in in like the next seven days seven or eight days like this just in the last two days this article um, and they were like everything is about to be restocked they said they had dramatically the word and I wish I had I should have saved this article for y'all for the show they said that they had dramatically accelerated their manufacturing in China and were going to like dramatically increase the supply coming in from China. And I read that and I was like, that is exactly what I wanted to see. Because my biggest concern going to this earnings call tonight or tomorrow, I still can't figure out if it's tonight or tomorrow morning. Was it's, that uh, According to their own investor relations website, it is tomorrow morning at I think 7.30 okay. in the morning. Okay, so but but so it's gonna I be an early day so, for us. I was so concerned that they were gonna come out and be like, "Oh, we have all this demand, but we, we're having major supply issues still." But reading that one interview uh, made me a lot more comfortable that they figured it out. So at least this next quarter, I'm hoping that they increase guidance significantly this quarter, and I'm hoping that that's going to be enough to continue to push the stock, which is at 52 week highs right now. That's another concern, right? Um, I'm hoping it's enough to kind of push the stock higher through earnings. And now this is all going to be about management's comments and guidance, right? So if they sandbag this quarter, I mean, uh, it's a bad deal for the stock. And if they, they need to come out and hype up the enterprise sales, which by the way, those enterprise sales are not likely to have happened this quarter and might not even happen that much this next quarter because enterprises takes a little while to get going, right? Yeah. Um, well, and that, and that's one thing that um, I was curious because Logitech's not a company that I follow. I was curious the degree to which their executive team, their CEO on the investor call would be like an enthusiastic cheerleader for the stock versus like being a hesitant to say we have good things coming. And uh, multiple times, the CEO, both in the last earnings call and also this investor, uh, this investor event that happened in New York City in early March, I believe, um, he's very enthusiastic. He's, he's he is. very much a, one of his quotes was, we've got a good thing going on here. And you never really hear companies 
talk about their products other than, you know, saying they have good products. You don't hear them talking about them having a good outlook for, for the future a lot of times. Yeah, you know, that's important. You know, that was a big part of why we went as heavy as we did on Peloton was because we knew that that CEO was a promoter. He is a huge promoter. And given the right amount of data and earnings and, and everything that's going on, we knew he was going to sell it, right? Yeah. And so I don't. I wouldn't say that the, uh, that the uh, Logitech CEO is as big of a promoter as the Peloton CEO, but I think he's willing to stand up there and really hype uh, good information. I think he's gonna have a lot of good information on this earnings call. Listen, it, it, it's a more difficult trade than Peloton, but I feel pretty comfortable. I like the risk reward. I think if the market's stable today and tomorrow, uh, I think I like the risk reward that this thing can push higher, not because of earnings right now and not even because of the current quarter guidance going up, which I hope it does, but because I think he can sell a story that's going to be an anti-pull forward story, right? So because everyone's yeah. worried that, oh, you're just pulling forward sales, you're pulling forward sales. I think he is going to do a really good job at communicating that this is not pulling forward sales. They are now accelerating their number one growth category, which is enterprise video that will go on for the next two or three, four years, right? Right. And speaking right. of, and hopefully, I, I there's going to be a new driver in this whole thing, and that's going to be that uh, you don't have to take meetings in, you know, in the office anymore. Let's, like, let's no. look at this. Uh, a question from one of our commenters: Every single big tech company already has video, but is that is that true? Like in the conference no. room of what is it? It out of out of the out of the market. How many conference rooms are full, and what percent? Two percent. Two oh, percent. Uh, if you include the breakout room, if you include small conference and breakout rooms, 2%. So here's the thing. Every company or a lot of companies, honestly, a lot of companies still don't even have full video in their main conference room, in their boardroom. But yeah. understand how many – guys, you don't know how many businesses there are, how many law firms, how many insurance companies. There are literally hundreds of thousands to millions of companies in the world, right? And – most of them don't even have video conferencing in their boardroom. Hardly any of them have video conferencing in their breakout rooms and their small conference rooms. And so the concept, they are saying Logitech has done the analysis and they're telling us that it, the market is only 2% penetrated. 98% of conference rooms and small conference rooms do not have video yet. That, according to Logitech, and I believe them because I've seen – we understand the enterprise market relatively well. It, 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 they don't have these in every single little room. You bear, you have audio conferencing, but not video conferencing in every breakout room. And that's a big deal Th to have that kind of growth ahead of them. They've they've proven that of the rooms that are wired, they get sixty percent of the market share. As more rooms become wired and and connected to the internet, that just seems like they're going to be the one. There, who else are you going to buy from? You're going to buy from either Logitech or Cisco, or who else even makes this kind uh, of You have po Polycom, Polycom, Polycom yeah. but or, or you know who else you have? Uh, you have, uh, here's what's interesting. They, in addition to being partnered with Microsoft, Zoom, and Google, they did a major partnership this last year with Crestron. And Crestron is actually like the premier uh, conference room video conferencing partner for all the big, the mega big companies that want to spend a quarter mil to have their conference room outfitted beautifully, right? Mm -hmm. So Crestron will come in and they will do the most insane, you know, thing for the big conference room. And then they're going to use, they're going to use Logitech for every other conference room, right? And they're going to use the Logitech software as well. So, so they're actually partnered with Crestron um, on conference room setup. So what I love so much about Logitech is Logitech is the ultimate enterprise company. They know exactly how to get in these enterprises through partnerships, right? Through distribution agreements. And they have been massively adding to their own sales staff this year. That's one of the things they've talked about uh, when it comes to enterprise, but even beyond their own sales staff, they have the sales staff of Microsoft and Google and Zoom and Crestron, they are all, they're like, they, I think they said they had something like 96 partners selling yeah. Logitech into the enterprise, right? Exactly. And it's, it's, 
I don't know if did you uh, you downloaded? I'm sure the uh, whole presentation they gave at the Investors Day thing. I've okay. read the whole thing, all 38 pages of it. I'm, yes. I'm going to try to put that on the screen, but I might break our entire webcast because we're using new software that uh, oh, I no. clearly don't know what I'm doing yet. <laughs> um, so let's see if I push this button. Does this do anything? Oh no, it doesn't because uh, I've locked. Here, let me go to my screen share. <laughs> You're scaring me now, Dave. <laughs> I know, I know. This this could be dangerous. Now, if I share my screen, yeah. and then oh look at that, and now I want to go to. Uh, my Safari browser. There's my Safari browser. And look, we're all in little boxes on the side. This is actually working so far. <laughs> okay. I think I know what I'm doing almost. Okay, so but, basically what Dave's telling you is if you guys want to go in deep, here's a 38-page Investor Day presentation that is not old. It came out in March 3rd. If you want to know everything there is to know about Logitech, this is the presentation to read. And it was really informative for me. And there's also a you can you can watch it or listen to it, and there's also a transcript if you just want to read through what they had to say. So, for yeah. example, the CEO said that uh, creativity and productivity are becoming a 1.5 billion dollar or greater revenue business for them. Video collaboration and gaming both have potential to be more than a billion dollar in annual sales. And if you think about where they are today, that would be adding. If they all get over the next three to five years, we'll be adding more than $1 billion of revenue to Logitech. We would be increasing our revenue by more than 33%. That's what the CEO said at this investor conference. Before we saw the massive yeah. acceleration in enterprise, right? In, in enterprise uh, video conferencing. Exactly. So that's what I love so much because I think most of the retail market and honestly, even probably a lot of the uninformed institutional market, unless you're really following Logitech deeply, uh, you're not really familiar with how deep they're going into this enterprise market and how associated they are with Zoom and Microsoft Teams, right? Yes, exactly. Do you think there's any danger in a slowdown of enterprise adoption, mainly just because people aren't even going into their offices right now? Are they still doing work to, to upgrade those offices, do you think? So, Jordan, that's a great – me and Dave yeah. had this debate on Saturday night. What I said is, right. hey, every CFO in the country right now is salivating over reducing their budgets for office travel and office expenses, and they're just reducing their offices by like 50 percent or 20 percent. But the one area that they're not about to cut – they're like, we have all this extra money in savings – but the one area that they're not going to cut or they're going to expand is, okay, now that half our employees are going to work from home, yeah, now that we only need half the office space, okay, Mr. IT guy, do whatever you need to do to get us wired up for video conferencing. And by the way, this stuff, Jordan, is so cheap. It's so cheap compared to the savings, the lease savings and the travel savings. It's like, how much, Dave, what does it cost, like 2000 bucks, $3,000? get one of these conference so, rooms set. it's ridiculous a under a thousand dollars in some cases and that's and that's yeah, what so like this, this whole deck for a is sales showing case for it and then you know what's so smart about logitech what they did was they developed their own software platform and that's what, that's what i was getting company, at here they have this logitech sync system that nobody really has Nobody else is competing in this market to keep track of who's using the stuff, which ones are end of life. You you basically can manage your entire enterprise video conferencing deployment of all of these random webcams that are mounted to walls and and set up in in all of your breakout rooms and even on uh, on you know the smaller rooms, the the major conference rooms and individual desks. So they have this software that is turning, you know, turning a hardware company that sells product that has maybe a three to seven year refresh cycle into a subscription revenue business as well to have this, this, you know, management platform. That's great. No, I, 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 I think it's, 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 it's pretty awesome. And, um, you know, like I say, I, I feel like I feel, I wouldn't call it a high conviction trade for me, but I would call it a solid medium solid medium conviction trade. I, I wish I would have gotten in a month ago, yeah. quite honestly, like a lot of things, right? But you could only, you only have so much time, you know, I did nothing but Peloton research for nine days, right? Uh, I wish I would have had more time spent on Logitech. Did you now, talk about the uh, their partnership with Crestron and how Crestron, the, the company that, that builds these uh, conference room 
platforms out. Totally. You have the touch screen and your curtains go down on a button. They are a reseller of Logitech's cameras. Oh, by the way, Lenovo, who I didn't realize this, Lenovo, they signed a major deal with them. Lenovo is a major reseller. Did you know that Lenovo accounts for two thirds of the business PC market globally? Two thirds of it really? is Lenovo no, I sales. I didn't know that. That's insane. That is. Um, and they so they have the biggest and the best partnerships out there to take advantage of this acceleration right now. Um, by the way, I do want to address something. The the guy I forget who it was that initially turned us on to Logitech. Thank you. Maybe put a comment on there to remind everyone who you are. You've been kind of pinging us, but you you mentioned Streamlabs, and I do want to talk about Streamlabs. We, you know, we don't use Streamlabs on dumb money. Streamlabs was an acquisition. They paid like 90 something million cash, 30 million in equity. Um, it was a recent acquisition by Logitech. Streamlabs is not, in my opinion, a needle mover right now for Logitech, but it is an awesome acquisition that will benefit from um, what's happening in the world right now. Dave, can you explain what Streamlabs does, basically? So Streamlabs is basically software that um, sits on top of this open source platform called OBS, Open Broadcast Software, I believe. And it's what a lot of web streamers use, whether it's gaming or content like us. We, we could be using OBS, we just aren't. We were using a platform called StreamYard, uh, which, which was awesome, but they're limited to 700 720p streaming and i wanted to try 1080 so if you guys think we look better today hit the thumbs up um but it basically is software that sits on top of that open source platform to make it easier to use so obs is software you download and run on your windows or mac and it's a little bit cumbersome to uh, operate um and streamlabs has this slick interface that sits on top of it and it's free to use and then on on top of that they have a subscription product that you can upgrade to that allows you to have little widgets and and all sorts of cool things um, we'll probably actually be using some Streamlab wi widgets on this to have comments and things like that as soon as i figure out what i'm doing on this software a little bit better but that that's all coming soon here on dumb money live but um we're it's basically a really cool platform to make it easier to use this software platform called uh, OBS. And here is their website. You can, you basically download and then you can broadcast to any of the streaming platforms. And so it, it's not a needle, needle mover right now, but I think it's going to be a positive that they'll probably talk about on the earnings call. I can almost assure you that that Streamlab traffic this quarter if you pull a g trend chart with the word streamlab dave yeah it one. is insane it is insane like so i know that they are going to talk about streamlab and it's going to be a net positive on the earnings call but it's not going to meaningfully move the the revenue number for logitech and by the way like all the data on logitech like the google trends for the word like keyboard or mouse or just Logitech in general, or if you do like Logitech mouse or Logitech webcam or webcam, like all the words, all the tags, and Jordan's wearing a ticker tag shirt today, but all the tags, like we had a million, what, what, how many would you track? A million and a half tags of ticker tags, word it combinations? Went up and down. At some point it was half a million and then uh, we had over a million at a certain point. So. Yeah, if, uh, if, so if, 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 our old, if our old team, Daria or Laura or uh, Ian or Jacob were watching today or Leon's watching, they could have told us how many tags we had for, I bet we had probably 700 tags for Logitech. Um, in the garage, in a, oh, there's some in my drawer actually. <laughs> not, not, not the, just my drawer in the kitchen, there's two in there. Sorry. <laughs> oh, look, um, look Le Leon has uh, changed his title to uh, crypto speculator. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what, what, is that Streamlabs, Grok? Can I see it, Dave? Yeah, that's, uh, is that it, is Streamlabs as a uh, five-year U.S. chart. I can't see the end of the graph on there. Is it getting cut off on my... Uh, I can't zo see the zoom right Zoom out on it. your... Um, zoom out on the view that you're looking at. Oh, I see. Okay, there we go. Now, isn't that beautiful, man? Well, I, it, it's the most beautiful G and do global. I think they're global yeah. too. Here, worldwide. Here's worldwide. It's also just top of the charts. Oh wow. Hey, while we're on there, can we just look at like webcam? Yeah. Which is, you know, 
and then we could do like gaming mouse or something or just So is, that's that webcam is, worldwide. You want to go to US? And webcam's up. I mean, you got to realize webcam would normally drop big time right there, and it just maintained since the holidays. That, look at that! Wow. Yeah, but um, webcam in general, like I said, because everyone has a webcam built in, the search volume over time seems to be going down. But the little spike here, on oh, the, it's completely huge. out of the ordinary to have a spike in March for webcam. That is. The, and what people don't understand, can I just explain G-Trends for a minute? Because I think a lot of people don't understand the importance of this. When you see that spike, it is so rare to see a spike that, like that last one that doesn't come straight down. So if you want to really understand the power of that spike, every little like millimeter is a week. So you can see how many weeks you have to add up. So if you add up every little bit of that last spike, it's actually like 10x or 12x the volume of the normal holiday season spike that you see that goes straight up for one week and comes straight down because that last spike kind of lasted for like seven weeks. It's insane, guys. You never see that. You never, ever see that on, on, on G-Trend search traffic. Um, I, I just, I, I, I love, I just, I love how powerful that, that graph is. So, it looks like these spikes are actually in September, maybe at the uh, back to school time. Oh, is that September. when they are back to school? Yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's spiking every September. But say your, your principal, Matt, it's the same argument, but it's just happening, I guess, at back to school time. Uh, and and by the way, Dave, do you remember, remember that Amazon link I sent you all of the top 44 best-selling webcams on Amazon? 44 of them. <laughs> this is insane. 44 of them were Logitech. Literally 44 out of 44. I... Have you ever seen a I've company? never seen a you know that, that kind of a best selling Amazon chart. I'll, I'll see if and I can so, pull that up for you too. Here's what's so interesting. And then Dave searched for the word uh, webcam on Amazon. It's like, wait, but there's a bunch of other products that are up here now. And the reason why is because there there are buying groups that were forming to where every single time a Logitech webcam became back in inventory that Amazon, that the buying group would purchase every single webcam in real time. Within like 30 seconds, they would purchase all of them and then they would distribute them amongst the buying group. And then the buying group would then remarket those webcams on Amazon at two to three X the price. So, so basically I saw a thread where there were a bunch of complaints about this and Logitech basically said that they contacted Amazon and had asked them to aggressively remove every Logitech listing by a third party that was marking their prices up. So that's why when you search for webcam, uh, it's like, only literally, one look or at two this. Logitech. These, this is all Logitech. Every single one. <laughs> every single one. Let's see when the very first non-Logitech webcam is. And, and look, this this eyeball one, that's, that's pretty much what I had. <laughs> they, they haven't changed their products at all. This best-selling one, by the way, this uh, the, the C310, I don't think it's a, that one. It's, it's one of the top sellers. It's one that came out in 2015, and it is still being made, and it is still one of their best sellers. I think this is it, the C210. That is that is like a 2015 model. Well, look, at, look at this. Logitech, 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 every single one. Is it, is it, do you remember, is it 40? Even even their thirty eighth bestseller is not even it doesn't even exist anymore. Dave, Dave, you got me. We've I, we've got every myself. single thing on here is a Logitech. <laughs> Has that I've ever happened? I'm so excited talking about this the last ten minutes. I have to confess, I bought another fifty contracts. So those right points. now, just on on the <laughs> on the live 50. show. And by the way, here's the thing about these contracts: the the spread is so big. The market makers are trying to – I'm not paying that market maker even close to the ass. I'm buying these things at just above the bid. Like I, I bought these at like 570, 585. Like I'm not paying anything close to the ask on these contracts. But I want to take this time to say we're not a financial advisor. Please do not take us to financial advice. This is what we're doing. We're very high risk. Our risk tolerance is different than yours. This show is for education and entertainment only. We're trying to get you to think how we think about – research and due diligence not to copy our trades do your own work on this stuff um but i helped have you seen spreads like this on options 
And they're trading a lot of options, but the market makers are trying to really mess. It. I think there's one market maker that trades Vlogitech options. Yeah. And he just refuses to give you a tight spread on this well, stuff. Well, the ones that I bought, they're, they're actually, the spread made sense because I was buying some that were under $5 and they have a uh, rounded to the nearest 10 cent limit on the order. You, so you can't place one at, you know, three dollars and 73 cents or 75 cents you have to do it either at 380 or 370 and the spread yeah. was you, like you 70 the 50s by 80 or you buying the 45s dave i bought the 45s oh dave what do you I buy, bought dave? i bought some 50s um i'm considering yeah. also what? getting some 45s yeah mine you are 50s. they're 50s. so cheap oh, oh 50s okay I, I, i'm 50 50 straight I was price. 60 okay they're not that cheap though they're like 350 do you need this thing to go up like yeah, they're like 260 right now they come down, so you need you need a stock to go up like three fifty, like considerable, like I don't know, like eight percent just to break even on them, you know. So, which I didn't, I thought I don't know, like I I'm getting more conservative on this stuff because I feel like could we get a ten percent move on earnings? I mean, theoretically, who knows? Anything could happen. We can get a fifteen percent, twenty percent, but I just I I don't know. I, I feel like I'm trying to reduce my risk on on the amount of movement I need on those. I'm gonna. Uh... Pull up the options just so we can all see what they look like today. Um, there were, by the way, there were an insane amount of op call options that traded on Friday. Um, look at this. So I uh, kind of those those fifty fives, four thousand yeah, that, calls. That's high. That's like really high. I mean, that's that's who knows anything could happen, but uh, you you would need to go to like fifty six and above to make fifty six essentially to break even. Um, yeah, but so that's why I got the fifty. So it only has to go to fifty-two something. I, I can't okay. remember exactly. Okay, I mean I'm not saying not to get the fifty. I, I got the forty-five. I feel more comfortable that Logitech. Sh I feel like it really shouldn't come down more than a point or two. Like even if we get a little bit of profit taking, uh, even if we, you know, even if there's a little bit of sell the news type stuff here, yeah. I feel like Logitech's a company that should be able to support upper forties as a stock price. So uh, that's where I was, you know, okay, losing 25% of my, you know, options trade on that. Um, but yeah, Logitech is it. This is it, guys. This is my trade for the week. And I like it. I'm glad you guys are both in on it too. Yeah, I'm trying to decide if I want to pick up some equity also. I might just- uh, So options. I did, and I'll tell you why, yeah. Jordan. I re like the more I got into the Logitech story this weekend, I'm not saying that Logitech's a company I want to own for four years or five years, but I feel like it's a company I might want to own for the next year. So yeah. I picked up I picked up some equity thinking I really like the trade here on the enterprise because like like I said, I think everyone's so focused on the webcam stuff and the mouse and like the keyboards that they're going to get a temporary pop from this whole work at home thing. And yeah, we all know that. But I feel like the enterprise division has some serious legs here, and that's the type of stuff that's going to play out over the next few quarters. So kind of like Peloton, I have options. I'll obviously sell my options tomorrow or this week. I'll, I'll exit those, hopefully at a profit. And I see myself potentially holding on to my Logitech stock as one of my core positions for the year as part of this whole crazy new world that we're in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I think a year time frame on that is perfect because it's. I feel like people are going to start pulling in all these projects that they weren't going to that they were going to push off before and start up new projects. Yeah, um, I want to go see if I can find my old office. Logitech equipment. So I'm going to I'm going to uh, let you two talk amongst yourself, and I'm going to go find my old Logitech. I'm going to try right. to I'm going to try to see what the Dave. quality resolution is on my webcam. Okay, I'm just going to warn you, hurry back, because I'm going to talk about a dark horse trade this week that oh, really? I have not made yet. I oh. have not done it. Breaking news here on uh, Dumb Money Live. All right, I'll be, I, I'll be right back. Uh, talk amongst yourself. And so remember, Jordan, we have we have, uh, we have have commenters, too. You want to... Uh, and then we'll get the commenters, for sure. Okay, Jordan, I started research, and I couldn't quite make a decision on it, um, but uh, container store earnings is this week, okay? Oh, man. That thing. I, like, just, it? Uh, no, no. Oh, um, you think people are doing a bunch of home improvement projects and things like I'm that right now? I'm contemplating. I'm contemplating because I saw the G Trends chart, and and uh, I mean, I guess I can pull it up. That Dave's so good at pulling this up. Um, the G Trend chart on Container Store right now. 
and just home storage in general is insane right now. It's insane. Um, so, dude, like, and also they're getting into closets right now. Like, they have two designated closet stores. One's in Farmer's Market in L.A. Yeah. And one's in Dallas. They just opened up. Container Store's a Dallas company, of course. Yep. Um, their stock is down, like, 50% still. Their uh, stock, since- from their from their IPO, that was at $18. They are down considerably. Okay, so um, I might even, I, I feel bad. No, I think their IPO might have been at $40, and they've just been dropping like a rock. So so I just bought a little bit of their stock, like a tiny, tiny bit. But here's my here's my thesis. So uh, everyone's down and out on Container Store because obviously they had to close all their stores. But they yeah. are doing curbside pickup, I think, at all their stores. And with the G trends as strong as it is, and listen, I, I don't know. I feel like there's more upside than downside at this point for Container Store. And it might be like this weird dark horse trade for the week. I'm not, I'm not how much, like, how much, are you, uh, how much are you throwing at this thing? So just little. I literally little. just put an order for 10,000 shares. Yeah. Um, but in, which is like 20,000 bucks. And I might purchase. If it stays, it was up a lot. It was up 12% on Friday. So I was hoping it would fall a little bit today. And it, it kind of is just flat either. on the day. Yeah. And the thing is, that I hate about it is the stock's not that liquid. Like I'm here putting in my order and they <laughs> won't even fill 10,000 shares. I just had to pick up my order twice and increase it 10%. I mean, yes, one penny. I see twice. it going up from your orders. You know, and like I'm trying to purchase $20,000 of a stock and I can't even like – that annoys me. That no just, one's rushing that's... out and buying container store stock right now. What? No one's rushing out and buying container store stock right now. That's the problem, right? And I, so I've had to raise my order size twice. And this market maker is such a jerk. Yeah. He just he just raised it twice on me. And to get twenty thousand shares of stock, I now have to raise my order size a third. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to leave it there. He's going to let it if sit. He wants to fill me, he can fill me. If not, think about it. screw is, him. Because is that your big play? Is is Container Store? It's not a big play. It's like this dark horse. I'm just curious, right? And I tried to buy twenty thousand shares right now, Dave. And I, by the, can you pull up, Dave? Uh, I can probably Container Store on Google Trends. Yeah. It is strong. The stock is down fifty percent, fifty percent, on like forty five percent in the last sixty days. And it's already a stock that already was hurting. It's already been doing bad, but they are, they have EBITDA profits, right? Um, everyone just assumes they're brick and mortar, so they're going to get destroyed. But the problem, the thing is, like my wife right now, like I got a delivery order on Thursday. These boxes were so big. It wasn't container store, but it could have been because it was these huge like containers, right? Because everyone's doing organization right now. Um, and it's, I think it's one of the mega trends that, I mean, people are aware of, but maybe not talking about as much. Is this like this? Everyone's stuck at their house doing massive organization. No, I would agree with that, but, just, but looking at this chart, it doesn't really seem to uh, be plan- panning out that way. Yes. What are you talking yeah, about? Well, look yeah, at, it, look it at the spike, in. Dave. Yeah, look at the spike. It pulled in. It pulled That's in. insane. That is a holiday season spike that we're getting right now. That it's not again like the other spikes I refer to. It went up and sideways. That does not happen. Look, your holiday spike goes up and straight down. We got an up and sideways spike that is insane for them for a company that just dropped by forty five percent. So the question here, and it's a question that I've gotten wrong in the past with Hasbro, is can the increase interest in organization and container store in general? Uh, make up for the loss in casual business that they get from people walking in their stores. Right. right? Have you done a drive-by? I have not because they're only doing they're only doing uh, uh, curbside business anyway, and like appointments and stuff like do curbside. They, do they ship? Uh, I think they do ship as well. Yes, but they're they're more of like. They do ship, but I think they said like the fastest way to get your stuff is curbside. So you can order it and pick it up like right now in an hour, which I think a lot of people would do for Container Store because people get obsessive about organization. But I feel like that's – isn't Container Store a place you just go in and wander aimlessly and say, oh, that looks like a perfect way to organize my closet and that looks like something I need for my kitchen? You you don't know what you want. You're not ordering it by name saying, oh, Uh, I need the plastic box you know, model X, Y, Z. 
I think it's that's a, a place that's that you a wander go store. To. I think it's a place you go to for something and you end up buying a lot more than you anticipated from yeah. the wandering. So I think they're going to lose on the wandering business that you would have bought all this extra stuff. But Dave, I really feel that people are doing some serious organization right now at their houses and they're not, it's not just container stores it's like Target, Amazon, they're ordering from everywhere, but yeah. container stores kind of like the go-to. By the way, they just opened up their new distribution plant in the North. So they used to distribute everything out of Dallas. They just opened up their new distributorship in like the Northeast. Mm -hmm. And they said that plant's going to be doing 40% of all the district. So people are going to get stuff quicker. So like they're in a perfect, they're in actually a really good place. Now this whole closet thing, they've turned two of their stores into closet stores where all they do is have like, like fake closets all around. Like it's like, yeah, like mini closet rooms around the store. I Which is the best way to shop bad. for a closet, by the way. If you've seen the display over on North Park, you, I mean, they don't even have the the biggest setup there. But if you, you I can't, I can't picture shelves when they're just like stacked in a, a in a section of the store. But when it's like out and it's like, oh, look how nicely organized that closet is. It makes me want to redo my closet. Hey, I'll yeah. the search term Alpha because I think that's their that's their uh, closet organization brand. Uh, Alpha, yeah, they own that company. Alpha, yeah. yes, you can, you can look. That's a good one look to look up it. as well. So, yeah, that's a, and that accounts for pretty reasonably large uh, percentage of their sh sales. Is uh, is Alpha? Is it oh, um, nothing? Hey, by the way, J. Dave in the comments, man, Lowe's and Home Depot earnings coming up. Their G trends certainly is insane. Um, I actually did a dry buy of uh, Home Depot uh, last week and was blown away by what I saw. Uh, they had a line out, a line out the door of Home Depot because yeah. they were social distancing people in. And yeah, I love Home Depot. I love Lowe's. I got a pretty sizable position in both right now. So yeah, I, I, I think they're good too. Lowe's, Home Depot. One so, thing that's going to be difficult in this new software is I can no longer uh, search for the comments you're talking about by time. Ah, oh, that stinks. Mm. But I did figure out how to put them on the screen. So, and <laughs> earlier when I was doing it, they were ginormous, but I think it's the right size now. I want to talk. So, so uh, Garden 3 says everyone seems to expect an earnings per share beat. Okay, yes. We, we've talked about that. We think everyone's going to, and, and they'll get a beat probably. They'll raise guidance probably. And everyone's going to hear what they already know, which webcam sales are up and stuff and mouse sales are up for gaming. Um, I think that's already known. I wouldn't trade Logitech based on that here. I'm only trading Logitech because I believe there's another side of the story that's way bigger than that. I Knowing this management team, reading the last couple of uh, earnings transcripts and reading through that investor deck, uh, from Investor Day on March 3rd, I believe that they will probably spend half of the conference call like parading their enterprise division and like talking about that and talking about how that's going to be a long lasting impact of this. That is the thesis that I think investors are maybe not fully appreciating. That no, I think they be, have to or else, I mean, this would be viewed as like a one time event, right? I mean, yeah. they, it'd be crazy if they didn't. But that's the edge that we're trading here, right? Like that's the edge that we think we are trading here. So um, by the way, uh, oh, this is a random comment. Chris just came in, Chris Cannell, Cannell which, are you guys excited about Elon might move Tesla headquarters to Texas? We were talking about this this weekend in our text thread. Um, I don't think it's happening, by the way. I think he's just using this as leverage to kind of get his facility open in California. It's all leverage for Elon. He's He's... He has, so we have friend, we actually have, have a good friend that works for Tesla and we asked them like, are you guys moving to Dallas? That's pretty sweet, you know, cause they'll be here. And they're like, no, he, we don't think it, it, like he's just, he says stuff all the time, but I don't think anybody thinks that that's actually going to happen. That guy is off the cuff. Yeah, I, it's, I don't think it's gonna happen. Um, if it does, it'd be pretty sweet. He might, he might, I think he would, I'll say this. I don't think he's going to ever open up another manufacturing facility in California. Yeah. I think he'd probably move all his manufacturing to Nevada, maybe Texas. Um, he's not going to take that chance again. Right. So. Do you know that uh, anyway. Logitech partnered with Herman Miller to create a gaming chair? 
I didn't. I didn't yeah, know about I that. saw that. It's not. I didn't even read the article because I felt like the thing is that'll never a, be. They, they they won't make too many of those. It'd yeah, it's it, it's not the meat of the story this quarter or this year or next year. Um, but yeah, I I I, I did see that. So that's it, guys. That's it. That's my trade. Um, you know, we'll see. Are, are you guys? Oh, we're not going to do a live episode at six a.m. tomorrow. Watching, I'll do that. <laughs> but, but I'll be Why on not? Twitter. If it, You'll be watching I'm it, not, right? I, I'm not. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm just going to wake up when I normally wake up and just see what happened. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. We'll see how it goes. Um, hey, Peloton is is looking good today, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just up a couple percent today. Um, back. Amazon's up a little bit. Dude, this container store, I hate having an odd lot number of shares. Are, 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 I, I'm worried that our subscribers are starting to buy and pushing me out of this trade now. <laughs> now I got to like... Now I, I got to finish a stupid $20,000 trade. I'm going to tell you something. There's no way in the world I'm buying the container store. I can't even fill a stupid 10,000 share order of a $2 stock. This is the most e-liquid company, piece of junk company. <laughs> yeah. All right, like I filled it. I started at 227. I ended up having to fill it at 238. And there's a reason I probably no I'm staying Probably out partially of this one. because because people are watching, making it even harder for me uh, to get a trade in. Um, hey guys, by the way, I have something interesting. You know how we ta- say that we're never going to ever invest in energy here, or like not invest, but like never talk about it because we don't know what we're talking about. So one of the, my good friends from the neighborhood is a super uber successful energy guy. Um, nicest guy ever. And I had an hour long phone call with him and our buddy Ryan. And he has a really interesting energy trade that he just thinks is a high conviction energy trade. I'm not going to talk about today. I'll talk about it with you guys first. Maybe next week, maybe we do it. <laughs> would we do an energy trade episode? Like if we, if we all, I mean, decide we like, do some I'll find some, on this? I'll find some, uh, stock footage of an oil well or something and put it on the screen. Um, I mean, we are we are in Texas. We should at some point educate ourselves on the energy. No, but this no. One, the last really time we like tried it. that, we lost like ten grand a piece. Yeah, I know. So maybe we'll lose another ten grand. Maybe we can make that ten grand back. I right. Jordan, I really yeah. I haven't done the trade yet, but I so like is it. it. It's not the company that I sent you. That energy company that I sent you. No. It? Okay. No, it's not. It's not. Um, so listen, we were going to do a different episode today. Remember about. We wanted uh, to do the episode all about the um, what what virus uh, what were we gonna do like the uh, no when the our, vaccine our, our, vaccine our, picks when when a vaccine vac- gets we released. have an episode on vaccine picks and then we had an episode on a second wave stocks to short on the second wave but listen things happen like when I started doing the research on Logitech on on Thursday and Friday. Uh, we had to make a change because we found something that we thought was interesting enough to bring to you guys. Uh, again, for you to do your own research on and make your own decisions on, uh, not to follow our trade. But so we're going to delay everything. Now we'll, we'll probably do the vaccine trade on Thursday. Then, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll do that one on Thursday. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, if you like us bringing you stuff when we find interesting things, like please like. Give us a thumbs up. That We need it for the YouTube algorithm, guys. If Look we don't that. have enough thumbs up. We have 94 oh. thumbs ups and only one thumbs down. Uh, oh, awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, if we don't get that, we'll never grow this channel. We'll never, YouTube will never show it to anybody. And I'm, um, I'll, I'm working on learning how to use the software that we switched over to. It's, it's, it lets me customize more, but it's, it's complicated. So I don't even know how to share a photo with you guys. But this is from Chris's front yard over the weekend. There it is. That is... Um, <laughs> <laughs> the the pickup the truck concert the pickup truck concert yes it was it was so much fun we had a great time it was awesome hey and you know what oh uh, look at that we just had an explosion of thumbs up 148 I actually on my screen Ooh. saw an animation if I can figure out how to show that to you guys on the screen I will definitely be doing it can we give myself a little bit of credit I'm learning how to new, use new equipment I have a boom mic here sitting over me I have an iPad Pro. What better? Te- I have I have a blue I have a light on the wall. The background me some trying back to match light. my back color. That's 
You're looking good. We're how, all coming together. It looks great. Jordan, it looks you good. Gotta, you got to get one of those backlights, man. They're cool. We're going to do all kinds of effects. Yeah, I didn't get the link. Somebody send me the link to it, and I'll, I'll look at it. All right. It. I'll send you a link. Yeah. I'll send it to you. Um, so, we listen, we're, we're doing nothing but improving this show every single week. It's nice to be able to, like, I, I'm so, I feel so terrible that I was making people watch that 1970s video of, of me. The last yeah, you actually, month. Your, your, your shot looks almost uh, HD now. It's like... I still don't understand why your color is off. I tried to adjust it a little bit, but... Um, Very red. Yeah. And Jordan, you look grainier shirt? than usual. Maybe know. it's because we're actually broadcasting in HD and we can see the grain now. But I think yeah. the show's really coming together. I think we, we're doing something right. <laughs> hey, uh, everyone watching today, love you for watching. Um, hey, good luck. If, you, if any of you that do end up trading on this uh, Logitech deal or even crazier, the container store deal... Um, good luck. Uh, hit us up on Twitter. Let us know how you did. Uh, at Chris Camillo at Dumb Money TV, right at Dave Hansen at Jordan McLean. Hit yep. us up, man. We'll be on Twitter. I don't yet have and, those titles uh, made. I, I have to. I have to re redo this whole thing. Plus, I'm getting a stream. Uh, one of those like Elgato stream switchers, so that I can easily just switch between cameras without having to remember the shortcut keys. It's gonna. We're really. Hey. I'm. I'm investing all all in on this uh, live show. Uh, me too. Me too. Dave experiments first. He figures it out and then tells me what to do. Eventually, Jordan will do it too. Um, all right, Dave, do your end of show thing. We got this done in an hour. That was really good. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you uh, listen to podcasts, you can find us on all of your favorite podcasting platforms. Just search for Dumb Money Live. If you have like, you've already done the thumbs up things. Uh, 188 of you have already done that. So thank you for that. There's, I can never remember the things I'm supposed to remind you. Do all of the things. Subscribe, ring a bell, notifications to all, because without setting, saying all, you may not get all. Um, and you know, sometimes we screw up and I started the uh, webcast and this immediately shut down as soon as the camera went on. It went to like automatic turn off mode. So, We'll figure this out. We're all learning together. Thank you guys so much for watching. We are Dumb Money. What day are we doing the next one? Thursday? Thursday. Thursday? Thursday. We'll see you then. Come.